but if you're chasing after somebody with a fixed budget and you give them a particular service or product that fits within their budget for them to consume every single day and whatever it is, you're going to make a really good bread because think about it. It's Sunday. I've been trying my best to uh, study, but for some reason the toilet at the uh, place we're staying at my cousin's house is uh, needs some work. So I'm going to go to Home Depot and change the um, the bowl seal and then the uh, flanges for the uh, toilet. And Ruby's at the same time going to learn how to practice her driving. So this will be fun. Uh, when you start owning your own house you have to learn to do things to save money so that's why back home in the philippines i pretty much like outside of climbing the roof and stuff like that pretty much i had to learn to uh do certain things in the house like toilets you're you're the one who make your kennel yeah the kennel so i mean i, I learned how to do welding cement stuff check it out So I just came back from Home Depot and I got my pieces over there. I'm gonna fix this thing real quick. Be careful, that thing might fall. The bolts? Yeah. This is a simple thing here. I'll put it right here. Spend about twenty dollars under twenty dollars, so eighteen dollars. Eighteen bucks, so yeah, so oh, that's so close. Oh, oh. Hey everyone, so this is Gil Vergara. I hope you don't hear the sound in the back. I am shooting at a different site today. I'm gonna try to make a bunch of videos today to give to you for the next couple of weeks because I had a lot of stuff in my brain. I just got promoted to a different position. I'm gonna be very uh, busy trying to understand new procedures and things like that with the new position, with the new role I'm in right now. So. If you don't mind, please consider subscribing to the channel, like the video, and more importantly, comment because that does help the algorithm on YouTube. So for those of you who wanted to uh, know more about as an expat, Phil M, whatever, going to the Philippines, maybe conducting business, I'm gonna help you out with the experiences that I have had running businesses there, as well as any insight that I can give you, and please feel free to email me if you need to to ask more questions because uh, you need to kind of pick the lock a little bit in my brain to uh, unlock these answers. I'm just going off of what is what I feel is important, key, key things that you need to cover when deciding to run a business in the Philippines. So, by the end of this video, if you hang on and listen to the end, I'm going to tell you the top businesses I suggest running in the provincial areas as well as operating in the city areas. The first thing I want to tackle is the differences, pros and cons of running a business in the province as well as in the city. So because those are two different environments, right? So I'm going to try to cover this point by point. If you have any questions, comment down below so I can help further you in your journey if you want to do small business or medium scale businesses, big businesses, whatever in the Philippines. Or this might help those who want to do businesses in, businesses in Southeast Asia because the culture is not that far apart or even in other countries that are considered third world countries, it might not be that far apart. Hopefully this, these set of videos will help you out. The main thing I want to really drive on this video is that it's not really the difference of best or worst. It's rather the preference of lifestyle. One key thing with any business uh, is to understand the demographic of your area. So obviously city, 
more congested, more money is pumping through there. Province, less congested, a little bit less money pumping through there. So your, uh, your approaches on what businesses to do is pretty much gonna make or break you. I'm gonna give you some pointers of what I look for and what I have done when doing stuff over there in the Philippines. So, and maybe this can apply, like I said, to other countries or whatever. One, I find what's working in the area, big sellers, big volume stuff, and I tweak it a little bit with a little bit of the American standard that I'm used to. Tweak it just a little bit where I can differentiate, vary just a little bit from my competitor. So it's not too unfamiliar to, to the public to the point where, you know, I don't know if you notice, Filipinos are not really, they're not really the first ones to want to do anything. They like to follow. If somebody does it, then they'll, they'll follow suit. But that's with most people in the world. They just want to, they don't want to be the first guy or girl to want to do it because they don't want to be the one singled out as, oh, uh, why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? So that's why I pick what's working and then tweak it just a little bit so I can just have some type of differentiation to my competitors. And my point too was I kind of, uh, spoke on it most people it's, it's sad but most people are followers they're going to follow and and move forward with whoever's in front of them that is taking a product or service because how do you get word of mouth advertising that's pretty much what it is because everybody wants to see if the other person who tries it first work for them for them to feel that urge to be like oh let me try it for myself because it's very hard it's very rare for me to see people especially running the little canteens I've ran uh, when I first open, you have to wait until like the quote unquote alphas of the group, boy or girl, to, in the society, in the community, to try it out. And then once I start seeing that the place is more packed, gets busy, you get a lot of business, traffic, then more and more people come because they're like, oh, that place wants to be good, let me try it out. And then even myself, I do that because why, why does Yelp exist? Because of just for that, you know what I'm saying? The next thing I want to cover is beating the competition. And these are the things that I have tried my best to hone on in, as well as constantly sharpening my skills and my trade or whatever approach I am doing in any business that I'm doing because just to stay ahead or think I'm, I am ahead, that type, of, that type of vibe. I broke it down to three, three main points and I brought this over from uh, living here in America. And things that, as I, as I said before, things that lack in the, in the environment you're in you just tweak a little bit and you push forward. So number one is customer service. If you if you haven't gone to any places in Asia or in the Philippines, uh, customer service outside of the really nice restaurants because they are trained to do certain things how the westernized culture is trained to, most places don't give you a lot of good customer service. You know, like uh, for instance, when Filipinos say, when you go to a store, establishment, product or service, whatever, they, hey, can, can you help me with this? Oh, for a while. You cannot say that to uh, especially westernized people because for a while, that could be one minute, one second, five minutes, 10 minutes, I don't know. Most people in the westernized culture don't want to wait. We, we are impatient. So obviously, if you are going to start a business there, please drill that into your employees. The customer service is key. And two is hiring people who genuinely want to work and trying to cultivate something in them to see what they want to do in the future. As in, like, hey, uh, Juan, what do, you, what, do you see, what do you see yourself in five years? What do you want to do? If money wasn't the issue, what would you love to do in life? And if somebody can't give me like a, even like a somewhat ambitious answer, I start feeling some type of way because I'm like, oh, you, so you just want to survive and be content. I personally don't go gravitate towards that unless like you're in like a, the bottom role, entry level role, because I need to know that you have ambition because some, that's something I can mold if, if I needed to. And help you advance at the same time, help that person advance at the same time, whether it's just uh, um, motivation, or inspiration and three is pretty much where a lot of foreigners end up breaking the bank when they bring up too much of the westernized standard and this costs a lot of money especially with certain products and services that you provide and they're gonna break the bank because one as I said before you have to go in there tweaking with a small variation not to the point where you're bringing in crazy amounts of 
um, goods from abroad just to, just to say that, oh, I got this, I got that. No one cares about those things because they're still spending pesos. So if you can find a way, a middle ground to give yourself that, that edge with using what's available to you in the country, which is gonna keep the cost down, at the same time, give you that edge as far as customer service, presentation, aesthetics. So there's a lot of things there that you can work with without getting stuff imported from other countries just to say, uh, this is why I charge all this money and because I have stuff coming from Germany, from, from Japan, from this, from that. And, but you, you have to understand, you're chasing after Philippine money. Outside of, even, even um, the local retired person is on a, uh, that's the key word, retired person. They're on a fixed income. You don't want to bust people over the head for your service and have 10 customers opposed to tweaking a little bit and making sure that there is a standard there given with the stuff that's around there you know you you you, you use you basically use the stuff that is around you to its full to its full advantage and but you still give the good service the good aesthetics and things like that without breaking the bank so th that's one thing that I have tried my best to to uh, to 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 steer to steer a road for Ruby and I on because there is a lot of potential when it comes to doing business in the Philippines because a lot of it is still undeveloped. So if you were the pioneer to bring that to that area without breaking your personal bank, then you're in a, I believe you'd be in a good position. So from personal experience, I've noticed certain tweaks that I've done have, have made me stay afloat or stay ahead of the competition. So that's, that's my take on there. So to, in conclusion to this video, I want to give you some businesses that you can try out that can work well in the provincial setting as well as the city setting uh, from personal experience for my friends family so on and so forth so take this with a grain of salt comment down below with other businesses that you believe will work in the provincial area as well as the city area I'll be more than happy to make more videos my target market this is this is one thing concerning demographic I don't know what you're after, but my thing that I'm always after is volume, which is uh, lower middle and upper middle class uh, citizens, people, because they're the ones that spend the money. And I've told this to many people, people with super amounts of, of wealth or a lot of money, they have options, meaning they can go here, they can go there, like concerning food, they can go, they can eat Italian one day, uh, um, Japanese another day. Or whatever so and whatever and so forth but if you're chasing after somebody with a fixed budget and you give them a particular service or product that fits within their budget for them to consume every single day and whatever it is you're going to make a really good bread because think about it would you rather sell a Rolls Royce or a bunch of Hondas you know Rolls Royce is nice Ferraris are nice but selling a lot full of Hondas and Toyotas, more practical and probably more beneficial in the long run. Because you won't, you won't, your overhead is not so crazy compared to something more exclusive and things like that. But that all depends on what you're chasing. Top four provincial businesses I believe you should look into or attempt. A livestock and meat shop. If you have the property for it, livestock, cows. You're talking about cattle, pig obviously, you know me already, and goats chickens as well and if you can maneuver that into a meat shop after the slaughter you make even more money aggravate or local buyer so if you're buying like uh copras which is like uh byproducts of um of coconuts if you're a local buyer for that the aggravate business because if you're in a provincial area more than likely everybody has has livestock everybody has chickens to take care of great business to get into small profit margin but consistent volume and entertainment. Now, when I say entertainment, you foreigners, stop catering to these other foreigners, okay? If you wanna make more money, you target the very local, because there's still kids, you have to understand. And those of you in Dumaguete, think about this. People in Bacong, Samungita, Dawin, Cebulan, Amlan, they go to Dumaguete to have their fun and their nightlife. Now, if you can bring that aspect to their particular town or your particular town, 
Sa same feel, I'm talking about classy, uh, you have entertainment there. Everything that's happening in Dumaguete or th those bigger towns, bring it to your smaller towns without attracting too much foreigners because I'll be honest with you, when Filipinos see too many foreigners, they're not gonna really come in. It's just not gonna happen. But then again, there's foreigners out there who don't want Filipinos in their business, which I believe is a very stupid, um, stupid approach to try to make money, unless you have money to blow like it's nothing. Just like I said, Rolls Royce, Ferrari versus Honda, Toyota. Which one would you go with? My last one for provincial businesses to start, pretty much any pop culture, you have to understand, like made for the local public, local prices, pop culture food, pizza, um, hot dogs, things that are like pop culture, as you guys know what it is already, ice cream, soft serve, prices that, are, that will cater to that local market. And you're, I believe you're gonna get a lot, you're gonna get volume, because that's all, that's what, that's all I, I chase. So um, that's pretty much it for my provincial businesses. Now on to the city businesses that I have tried, family, friends, so on and so forth that maybe you should inquire and maybe attempt. Same thing, local food with the entertainment, but if you're gonna fluctuate on price, have it towards the work, the, like, you know, like the working class, the, 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 the government class people, uh, the people that are making about 15,000 plus pesos a month. And this, I'm talking about Dumaguete, not Manila, because they, they make more money. Having the working class go in there if you're in the city area, right? So uh, you're talking about the bankers, the the, the, the call center people, the, the, the government workers and all this and all that, and small business owners. With all due respect, I hope I didn't offend nobody, but I'm very conservative in my, in my investing. And I, I, I only go for what's there ready for me to grab. The biggest numbers for me to grab, I try to grab. Water refill stations. This can be provincial depending on the traffic you have. However, in the city, water refill stations have been known to generally stay on the up and up if managed properly. Anything hardware construction, especially that the Philippines are going through a boom right now, people are making more money, they're making more renovations to their home. Hardware construction is also a good, good fit in the city area. I've, I've been seeing this a lot around towns now. It's actual laundromats like they have here in America. Even if you were to do a laundry service, I think that would do very well in the city area because just of pure traffic. You have a better, you have a better group of people to work with as in population wise, not quality wise, obviously. And lastly, a pay per service business, as in uh, having the maids come in. You provide a product or service that has maids come in to clean the house, uh, people to come in and clean the cars, detail the cars. Anything that is a personal service that can be, that can be monetized, I think you do very well in the city just based on the population that you can attract. So those are my pros and cons in running a business in the province and the city. Uh, comment down below with your comments, it really helps the algorithm. And once again, please consider subscribing to the channel because I want this channel to grow and hopefully I can, I can consistently do this closer to the full time because I want to keep uh, pumping out videos and information to you guys. Once again, my name is Gilson Vergara. Thank you so much for your time and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye. Um, I'm just going off of what I believe are the more key important things. I, I am just going off of what is, I'm just going off of what is, uh, Jesus Christ.